good afternoon and welcome to the next short video in the ahargana series in this video we will take a look at the correlation between the terrestrial and the celestial sphere why do we want to do that so if you look at all the calendaric elements we have discussed so far a majority of them do not have a visible impact on the surface of the earth for example, let's take a Sankranti, let's say Mesha Sankranti or Makra Sankranti. When a Sankranti happens, we cannot make out on the surface of the earth that the Sankranti happened. Astronomers can make out because they are calculating, they are observing, so they know it happened. But we can't feel anything on the surface of the earth. Same way a Titi, let's say the moon moves from Dvitiya to Tritiya Titi. We can't make out that it did. It has no impact on the surface of the earth. But the last two episodes, we discussed Uttarayana and Dakshinayana, Devayana and Pitrayana. They have a visible impact on the surface of the earth in the form of seasons, Ritu. To put it simply, when Devayana starts in the northern hemisphere, we start feeling the days are getting warmer and warmer, hotter and hotter. When Pitrayana starts, we start feeling that the days are becoming cooler and cooler and eventually it becomes winter. So Devayana and Pitrayana, Uttarayana and Dakshinayana have a visible impact that we can feel on the surface of the earth. So this is because there is a correlation between this celestial sphere that you see in front of you and the terrestrial sphere. Now that follows by definition it's quite obvious because this celestial sphere is the entire space surrounding the terrestrial sphere. But I will sh still show you in this animation in greater detail what this correlation is. So first I am going to zoom in a little bit in the celestial sphere. And also I am showing you on the top left hand corner the coordinates of the sun. But this time, I am not showing you ecliptic coordinates. Instead, I am showing you something else called RA slash DEC. Right ascension slash declination. So, I will not talk about right ascension right now, but look at the declination. The declination is nothing but these lines, these horizontal lines that you see. And these correspond to latitude on the terrestrial sphere. It's called declination here on the celestial sphere, latitude on the terrestrial sphere. And 0 degrees, 0 minutes, 0 seconds means the sun is on the celestial equator. And this means that on the terrestrial sphere, the sun is right overhead the terrestrial equator. So let me switch to the terrestrial sphere now. I have to use Google Earth to show you this. This is very familiar to all of us. Here is the terrestrial equator, here is the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. We call this a globe. Uh, but in technical terminology, I have to call this terrestrial sphere. And here is India. So on Vasanta Vishwat, the sun is on zero degrees declination that means the sun is on top of this equator here in the terrestrial sphere so now let me move the animation and you see the declination is changing now it became one degrees two degrees three degrees so here it's moving north of the equator further and further north of the celestial equator Correct. So now it has come to 8 degrees 3 minutes and I am saying the sun has now reached Kanyakumari. Sun has reached India. And on April 10th at 12.21 in the afternoon, the sun is right on top of Kanyakumari. That means coming back here, we all know where Kanyakumari is. But I want to get that 8 degree line 
So let me zoom in some more. So here is the 8 degree line. And there you go, that is Kanyakumari, the southern tip. So on that day, April 10th at 1221 in the afternoon, the sun is right on top of Kanyakumari. Now, when the sun comes on top of a point, you will have a no shadow day at that point. Which means because the sun is right over your head, it will not cast any shadow. As simple as that. So, 8 degree declination is 8 degree latitude. Now, moving forward, the sun has moved to 9 degrees. Further north, it's crossed the 10 degrees declination line. It's come to 11 degrees, 12 degrees. And just short of 13 degrees, I have stopped the animation. We have reached Bangalore. Sun has reached Bangalore. On April 24th, 12.17. I'm using 2021 as the date. So that is 13 degrees. Let's look for 13 degrees here. And there is Bangalore. Let me zoom in some more. 13 degrees, that is Bangalore. So on April 24th, 12.17, the sun is right on top of Bangalore. But here is the other interesting point. So this is zero shadow day for Bangalore, but not only for Bangalore. I am saying this will be zero shadow day for all places on this 13 degree latitude line around the globe. So for example, it will be same day, it will be zero shadow day for Chennai also and for Mangalore also, Mangaluru. Because they are all on that 13 degree latitude line, little bit this side, little bit that side, yeah, but that's okay. Except that Chennai will have zero shadow a few minutes earlier than Bangalore. And Mangalore will have zero shadow day, zero shadow time a few minutes after Bangalore. Why? Because you know the earth is spinning on its axis. And when the sun reaches this point, below the sun, the earth is spinning. So first, Chennai will come under the earth. Then Bangalore will come, uh, Chennai will come under the sun. Then Bangalore will come under the sun. Then Mangalore will come under the sun. This is fundamental uh, physics which is taught in schools, earth is spinning. So sun will rise first here, then here, then here, or better still, sun will rise first in Japan, then Singapore, then Chennai, Bangalore, Mangalore, etc. And then sunrise will move. You see the point, because the earth is spinning in that direction. So same way, sun rises first here, then in Bangalore, then in Bangalore. Same way, sun comes right overhead, first in Chennai, then in Bangalore, then in Bangalore. So if Bangalore has zero shadow at 12.17 in the afternoon, Chennai will have it a little bit earlier, maybe 12.10. And Bangalore will have it a little bit later, maybe 12.25. I have not checked that up yet, but it will be earlier and later. So this concept you have to understand that everywhere on the 13 degree latitude line around the globe, zero shadow day will be April 24, 2021. Good. Now let's move forward. Beyond Bangalore, I want to cover all the major cities so you get a feel for this correlation. So we are now approaching 16 degrees, declination 17 degrees and we have reached Hyderabad on May 9th, 12.12 12 in the afternoon. So Hyderabad is, let me zoom out a little bit, there is Hyderabad, 17 and a half degrees. And not only Hyderabad, Vishakapatnam will also have zero shadow day on the same day, because that's also in that same vicinity, same latitude. On May 9th, proceeding forward, we are now approaching the 20 degree line, but before that at 19 degrees we reached Mumbai. 
on May 16th, not we reached Mumbai, Sun reached Mumbai on May 16th. And where is Mumbai? There it is, 19 degrees line. Correct, this is 19 degrees and there is Mumbai. Then we proceed forward, we cross the 20 degree point. I'm trying to cover all the major cities, so what you can next expect is Kolkata. And we are approaching there. We reached, sun reached Kolkata on 6.15 at 11.35. Because Kolkata is very much to the east, the direct overhead time is 11.35. Whereas the rest all had 12.17, 12.12, 12.35. Mumbai is at the other end. So you can see the difference between east to west. Kolkata is very much to the east. 11.35 is known. Mumbai is very much to the west. 12.35 is known. Almost a one hour difference there. That's why our country really should have two time zones. But we took five and a half as the time zone in the middle. So on June 5th, Sun is overhead Kolkata and that is 22 and a half degrees latitude. So where is Kolkata? There it is. And is it at 22 and a half? Let's zoom in. I want to see the 22 and a half. Correct. So this is 22. This is 23. And this is right in the middle of the two. So this is 22 and a half. Right between the two. So Sun is overhead. Kolkata now, and now we are approaching the Tropic of Cancer. But before we get to the Tropic of Cancer, I want to highlight one place called Ujjain, which the sun raises on June 12th at 1226. So where is Ujjain? Let me zoom out, come back, and you see here is Ujjain. And this is very close to the Tropic of Cancer. Now, I am highlighting Ujjain because in the olden days of Hindu astronomy, Ujjain was the prime meridian. Ujjain was to astronomy what Greenwich is to astronomy today. Greenwich means time we talk about. It's become a center for astronomy, right? Same way, Ujjain was the center for Hindu astronomy. Now, beyond this, the sun will reach the Tropic of Cancer and you know it will not go beyond. And in our geography, you can see that this is also where the Vindhya and Satpura mountains are, a little bit north of the Deccan Plateau, but the sun will not move beyond this latitude, which means the sun never goes directly overhead the Indus or the Ganges valleys. The sun does not go directly overhead all these portions of India. So coming back here, let me continue the animation. So the sun is moving to the Uttarayana point, that is the northern limit. It will not move beyond that. And now what happens? Dakshinayana has started. So it is retracing its path in a way as far as declination is concerned. Now declination has started reducing. So, obviously, it has to come back on top of Ujjain again. So, a second no shadow day happens on June 30th at 12.30. Continuing further, it's retracing southward. So, again, it has to come back over Kolkata a second time. So, a second no shadow day happens for Kolkata on July 7th at 11.41. So you may ask, how come it's back on top of Kolkata? Because now that previously it was here, sun was here. Now the sun is here. It's clearly in a different place in the celestial sphere. So how can it be on top of Kolkata? But the point is, yeah, the sun has moved from one Rashi to another Rashi probably. You know about Rashi. So it moves along the ecliptic. It is crossing from one Rashi to the next Rashi to the next Rashi, etc. Meshadi is here. It would have started with Mesha, Rishabha, Mituna, etc. So definitely sun is in a different place. But the earth keeps spinning. So every day, every spot on the earth, sun will rise, sun will come overhead, sun will set. 
and it just so happens that the second time the sun comes directly over at Kolkata in a different Rashi. But it is directly over at Kolkata on July 7th at 11.41 for a second time. June 5th, 11.35 was the first time, Uttarayana. Now it is on Dakshinayana, it's come overhead. Continuing further, now you know Mumbai has to come next and sun probably has to come somewhere here to reach Mumbai. So let's wait for Mumbai. So this is the second no shadow day for Mumbai on 7.27, 12.45, July 27th. Then sun traces its way back to Hyderabad. Hyderabad on August 3rd, 12.22. Then sun is heading back to Bangalore. So it should come somewhere here, if I'm not mistaken. So let's wait for it. There it is. August 18th, 1224, second no shadow day for Bangalore. And then the sun is moving back towards Kanyakumari. So this is all Dakshinayana. Mind you, it is all still Devayana because it's still north of the celestial equator. But the direction of movement is Dakshinayana. So finally, a second no shadow day for Kanyakumari on September 1st, 1220. And beyond this, the sun bids goodbye to India and moves south on the Indian Ocean. It's moving away from India, out of India now. It's no longer on top of India any longer, any part of India. So this is what I meant by the correlation between the celestial sphere and the terrestrial sphere. And also observe that in this part when the sun was coming, the first no shadow day, the days were becoming hotter and hotter, unbearably hot. But when you come to this part, it's not so hot because the rains would have set in. Because you're talking here about June 30th, July 7th, monsoon. So as far as seasons are concerned, while astronomy and the sun's movements play a part, but there are other factors at play, like the monsoon. And also the distance of the sun from the northern hemisphere versus the southern hemisphere. But these are things we will talk about when we get to discussing Ritu or seasons. Right now, this correlation is what I wanted you to understand and how this affects the seasons. The details we will go into in the next episode. So I will stop this episode here. Thank you very much for watching.